Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to The Proof of God is Everywhere. Powerful by a merciful servant yet again. As a believer myself, I of course see the proof of God everywhere. I see the proof of God, the proof of the creator everywhere, just as any atheist would see the proof of a creator of a phone everywhere as well. Nothing within creation exists without a creator. When it comes down to material things, to technology, everybody agrees. But then when we ask the deep questions, who created the ocean, who created the mountains, who created this planet, who created this universe, the atheist will say it came out of nothing. Yeah, sure. So I'm not going to watch this video with the intention to change my perception, but rather we're going to use this video as a powerful reminder. Let's have a look. There are numerous examples, and no volumes can be large enough to contain them all, even if they filled the whole planet. Each atom in the universe is actually a proof on the basis of providence, whether we realize this today or will do so tomorrow. A. Insulin, the hormone that allows our bodies to use glucose, is secreted by the pancreas in yes. the exact same amount of sugar we consume. B. The power of our hearts in pumping blood is exactly equal to the energy needed by the muscles when exerting any effort. Sure. C. The one-way valve of our stomach prevents the influx of digested food that would otherwise harm us. D. The sphincter muscles located at the gates of our orifices, without which our clothes would have been soiled the whole time. E. The skull bones that are left unfused at birth, so the baby can easily cover the journey through the birth canal without breaking its head. Had these bones been fused, the baby would have never been able to cover this journey, except if its skull got broken. These bones stay unfused till the brain is fully developed. F. All the previous statements as a former fitness trainer and now father of a one-year-old boy, I can confirm all of them, they're all accurate and correct. All the axes of your nerves that convey the electrical signals are covered with a dielectric layer, as we do with electrical wires so that the electric signals do not get lost or disturb us. G. The electron revolves around the nucleus at a speed of 1,000 kilometers per second, or otherwise, it would collapse inside the nucleus by the force of attraction of the positive nucleus, and the universe would have collapsed before it even began. So, this is the ideal speed for forming the atom. H. When two atoms of hydrogen combine, 0.7% of the hydrogen mass turns into energy. If this mass was 0.6% instead of 0.7%, the proton would have not combined with the neutrons, and the universe would have remained in the form of hydrogen, and none of the okay. other elements would have been formed. If the mass converted to energy was 0.8% instead of 0.7%, the fusion would have been too fast, which would have led to the disappearance of hydrogen immediately from the universe, making... The atheist will say, this is all coincidence. ...life impossible. That's why this figure had to be between 0.6% and 0.8%. I. The electron mass constitutes 0.2% of the neutron mass and this mass is ideal for forming the atom. J. After germination, the buds tend to go up directly to the light source, whereas yes. the roots tend to go down because- I used to grow some plants myself. The buds are highly sensitive to light. Don't ask which ones. All the information they need to function is encoded within the seed, and there are hormones that control the upper and lateral growth of the plant, yep. as well as the growth toward the roots all of which is encoded within the seed. You eat the delicious fruit and throw the dry and tasteless pit away. This way, you are compelled by a controller who governs the whole universe, allowing that fruit to pass its genes all over the earth, 
giving yes. you the savory taste while hiding the genes in the core of a smooth, dry pit. Absolutely, and this leads to a philosophical question. If we are using the plants or are the plants actually using us? Because the plant needs a host that will then distribute its seed. Just as explained in this video, we are attracted to the fruit, but that fruit developed its taste, so it actually becomes attractive, tasty to us. And because we enjoy the taste, we produce plants on an industrial scale, be it apples, potatoes, corn, and what not. Ultimately, the plant becomes successful due to us enjoying the taste of the plant. It's very, very interesting. The plant tailor fits that taste to us, so we actually distribute their seed throughout the world. It's amazing. Once the seeds stick to the ground, it starts quietly transforming into branches and roots. And this is how the mother succeeds in passing her genes on to its children. Yep. All of this takes place in a plant that has no cognition. So, no who adjusted the information for those deaf-mute fruits? And who adjusted the amount of sugar so it would appeal to your palate? Who made the seed unappealing so you could dispense with it and throw it away? Evolution! Who loaded the seed with sufficient genetic information to create a new plant it's with sarcasm, all its details guys. and functions? Okay. Lately, the scientists have been discussing the total mass of the universe and how it is essential for our existence on Earth. Inertia, this blessing which is given to our bodies in the form of resistance to any change in movement, originates from the mass of the universe. Had the inertia been any less than what it is, any soft breeze of wind would have been able to move the rocks which would not have been able to resist the least amount of effort exerted on them. Sure. In a universe like ours, we would have been bombarded by all sorts of flying bodies. If the inertia was more than what it is, we would have found a great difficulty in moving our fingers, if we even managed to move them, and controlling them would have been an improbability. This means we would have been unable to move or do any tangible effort of any kind. The first man created would have not left his spot and the embryos would have not left the wombs. That is, if they even manage to take form in the wombs. That's why it is particularly interesting that the inertia of any matter had to be identically what it is right now. The thing that baffled the physicists here, as we see in the book, Unity of the Universe by Dennis William Skiyama, is that of this inertia, the whole of the Milky Way galaxy only contributes one ten millionth. The Sun contributes one hundred millionth and the Earth itself contributes one thousand millionth. This leads us to realize that this ideal inertia we live on and which allows us to partake on all our activities is the overall value of the whole universe. Consequently, we can particularly say that our existence depends precisely on the mass of the whole universe and its very existence. Allah says what means, we did not create heaven and earth and all that is between them in vain, that is the opinion of those who deny the truth. Woe betide those who deny the truth when they are cast into the fire. Chapter 38, verse 27. Bye bye, atheists. The more we ponder and look, the more we realize the marvels, the wisdom, and the intricacies of this creation. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. As I said in the beginning, it probably won't change my perspective, and this is true. I still am in awe when I look at the world. For me, there is no more sign needed of a creator than simply going out into nature. But that being said, there was a lot of additional interesting information within this video. For example, the skull bones of babies, how they are shaped, that they're not fused yet, or the description of atoms and electrons. Overall, I would say that this is an entertaining and interesting video, especially worth checking out for eight Yes, for believers, on the other hand, this serves as a reminder. Of course, I personally am much more interested in the theology of Islam. Unfortunately, this video didn't go into the depth of the theology of Islam. It quoted the Quran only once. As Christians, we believe in a creator. Jews believe in a creator. Even Hindus believe in a creator, etc., etc., you name it. I personally do not need to be convicted of a creator. I already believe. I would consider myself a monotheist either way. So, therefore, 
of all guys when you recommend videos to me in the comment section please recommend videos that really go into the theology of islam all right guys but this is it for today's video if you liked it leave the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon for example all the links are in the description box below moreover yet again over 70 percent of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel so if you enjoy the content click subscribe and the notification bell all right but this is it for today as always may god bless you all much love and peace